There we are. We're at the top of the hour, Brother Micah, and this is Bible, Truth, Principles, and we're so glad that all of you are joining us. Let's say, oh yeah, people are joining in now. Good, good, and more, I'm sure, are going to join in the next few minutes, and it's going to be quite a webinar, Brother Micah. Yes, uh, you and I both play the piano a little bit, but the pianist that we have with us tonight is superb. He's exceptional. I don't want to, I hope he's not listening to so get a, a big hit, but <laughs> he is a phenomenal pianist. And more than that, he's also an exceptional Christian man. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're so glad of that. How are you doing today, Brother Micah? Doing great. I I'm excited to have uh, Brother Chamberlain. I had someone that's actually watching right now, a missionary to Ireland, Brother Philip Tharp. He contacted me and had some very kind words to say about you, Brother Chamberlain. He was excited to jump in. And so thanks for listening all the way from Ireland. And yes. uh, But I'm, I'm excited to hear what Brother Chamberlain has for us today. Oh, me too. Um, you know, I just talked to someone who's going to Ireland in the near future. Mm -hmm. and, uh, a pastor and his family that are just going there to visit just for four or five days. And my daughter has always had a great affinity for Ireland. And we're happy about that. Well, this is Bible Truth Principles. We're about two minutes into this 40-minute webinar. And so let's have prayer, may we? And then we'll formally introduce our guest tonight. And we want to thank everyone who is tuned in. Uh, this will go about 40 minutes. And it's going to be a good time uh, with Christian music and uh, Christian fellowship. Let's pray, may we? Lord, thank you that uh, using the internet, we're able to have this webinar for thy glory. Everything we do, Lord, is for thy glory and for the advancement of the Christian faith, everything. And so, Lord, we pray for your hand to be upon this uh, webinar, that you'd use our guest in a good way, and that me and Brother Micah will be used of you as we host. And everyone watching now and those who will watch, may they be helped to be better musicians and better Christians as a result of this webinar. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I first became acquainted with David Chamberlain through Ed Russ, your boss, Ed Russ, Brother David. And I was doing a project, and he said, we've we found this man, David Chamberlain. And uh, I found out that everything Brother David was saying about David was true, that he really was a superb uh, musician. At that time, you were still at Franklin Road Baptist Church. You were serving as their pianist. You were working in a lawyer's office. Was that right, David? That's right. Yes, sir. indeed. Uh, and, uh, you weren't a lawyer at that point, but uh, you did proofreading, marketing, uh, whatever um, at that uh, law uh, office. A bunch of IT and, work uh, as well. Oh, that was it. The IT work. Mm -hmm. See, somewhere along the way, I thought you were a proofreader there. And I have so often asked you to proofread things for me. <laughs> well, I, I did start at that law firm in a word processing capacity. So I did a lot of proofreading there. So you learned big technical words that way. Yeah. Here before, yes. Yeah, I've, I've used a couple of big words in front of you, and you've almost always known what those words meant. Yeah. And uh, it's very impressive. But um, so, David, um, you serve now. What's the name of the ministry where you serve? I'm, I work with Faith Music Missions, and we are a recording studio ministry of our church, Faithway Baptist Church. And I've gotten to serve here for the last 20 years. And uh, Faith Music Missions started back in 1979. Our uh, former pastor, Gail Russ, started it way back then. Yes. And a gentleman who's probably watching right now, John Reynolds, has been very involved. And Dr. Reynolds, of course, encouraged me toward Faith Music Missions. And so 20 years at Faith Music on staff. Yes, sir. And before that, you did projects for them. Right. For about four years. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and so, so, wow, nearly quarter of a century now. I know. That's <laughs> amazing. That's really amazing. And uh, we're thankful. So, uh, Brother David, uh, when did you receive Christ as your Savior? I was uh, 11 years old at the time. Um, I had been in church some uh, as a kid. And uh, at some point, our family stopped going to church. But then my sister 
had started going to a church nearby us, and um, she invited me to a revival meeting, and I heard the gospel there and uh, understood it and uh, accepted Christ, and uh, it's been great ever since. The Lord wow. has, uh, you know, redeemed me and uh, forgiven my sins, saved my soul, and uh, he's been a constant companion. Amen. You know, one of the best ways to win others to Christ is just give your testimony. And everyone that is saved has a Christian testimony. I was lost. I received Christ. And everybody listening to me, you need to receive Christ. That's the three elements to a good testimony. Right. Well, that's wonderful. Wonderful, Brother David. So how did you become a pianist? Well, uh, fortunately, our public schools had pretty good music program. We were learning to read uh, music, at least treble clef, uh, by third or fourth grade. Uh, of course, all the kids had to play flutophones in the fourth grade spring concert. And uh, then we could join the band and the chorus in fifth grade. So I, I did that, certainly. And uh, I convinced my parents to buy me a Magnus chord organ. It's a plastic organ that has chord buttons on the side, and all the keys are numbered. And uh, it came with music books that actually had the melody written out in normal musical notation, but then had the numbers of the keys above that and, and the chord buttons to use. Um, so as, as I worked with that, <clears throat> I was pretty interested in it. My parents uh, realized that, uh, uh, that I needed to move the chord organ to somewhere that wasn't a public area, so I, <laughs> because I spent so much time with it. But uh, I uh, learned to uh, make the sounds of the chord buttons on the keyboard, and that was one of the ways I learned to, uh, uh, to chord and what the chords were and what they were made of. And uh, so that's where I started. And uh, then by the time I got to about seventh grade, I had been in band a couple of years um, and in chorus. So I was reading treble clef quite a bit. And uh, in seventh grade, I started accompanying a, a school choral group. Well, seventh graders need their part played hundreds of times. Um, so that gave me, gave me a lot of experience reading even some of the bass clef at that point. And uh, about that time, I was also starting to play in church a bit. Now, I had a great privilege because our church organist, who is the pastor's wife, played the organ loudly enough that it didn't matter what I did. <laughs> so I, I could experiment without pressure. Well, and that's then, interesting. Yeah. Now, let's go back to that band. Did you yeah. play in the band? Yes. I, in fifth grade, I played clarinet. In sixth grade, I changed to flute. Uh, in junior high school, my director... Uh, uh, had a need and he uh, actually convinced me to play the bassoon for eighth grade. <laughs> well, you've got some experience with these instruments then. Yes, indeed. And there's all sorts of jokes about the woodwinds that the brass players make. You know, they say, right. what is the difference between an oboe and a bassoon? Oh. The bassoon burns longer. That's a oh. terrible joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you actually... Heard have heard the joke, what's more out of tune than one flute, it's two flutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so you actually played the bassoon in the band. Yes, indeed. It's a very unique instrument, and it's a very support role instrument. Yes, indeed. Um, that's, uh, that's very... For Bible truth music, but you've also played the flute on a number of these. Yes, indeed. Uh, you, you actually are a flautist. <laughs> That's uh, a fancy name. If you're speaking French, yes. Yes, yes. Well, I guess I was speaking French there right. at the moment. Flautist. Well, so David, you're in the studio right now. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, I'm in the piano room of our uh, recording studio, and we've recently moved to this location. Uh, our church moved. Uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, so we've pretty much uh, gotten to make the studio the way we wanted it. So here, here we are at the new location, and we've uh, done about uh, there, five recordings so far. We're in that exact room. What was yes, that? It seems my internet. It seems my internet was unstable for a moment. Oh. Uh, Micah and I were just with you in that room rehearsing. 
yes, for indeed. that uh, recent recording. Well, David, why don't you take the next few minutes and talk to our church pianist about their role in the services, the service of the Lord. What do you have for us tonight to talk to us about? Yeah, I wanted to talk about a few uh, philosophy type things about what a church pianist should be doing in the service. Uh, Psalm 33 tells us to sing unto the Lord a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise. Um, and I think we should stress more skillfully than loud with that. Uh, we want to do music that's edifying and pleasing to the Lord, certainly. We want to communicate through the music that we present uh, the truths from, from God's word. Um, I thought one few things we talk about today are preludes and postludes for one section and uh, more offertories and accompanying for, for some of the other <clears throat> ideas. Um, and one, one thing about playing preludes and playing in a service is that you pretty much have to be ready to do th many things at any time. Uh, so having good practice behind you is pretty important, where if you're having to, you know you have to play this song and it's a struggle to play this song so I'm not sure when it's going to do it. Okay, it's now. Then that puts you in a, um, an uncomfortable situation where you're kind of set up to not do as well as you should. Um, so I think practice is very important. Um, I've, you, we've all heard the old adage that practice makes perfect. Uh, not necessarily, but practice does make permanent. Whatever yes. we rehearse uh, ends up being what, what happens. Um, and I've, I've heard something recently that I thought was pretty interesting. Um, two things, to practice until you can get it right, and then continue practicing until you can't get it wrong. Mm, that's well put, yeah. And I, I haven't practiced that all my life, certainly, um, but it, there are certain things that I look back and I realize that I play maybe repetitively, you know, things I play pretty frequently that I don't have to be thinking about it, but really I've played it so many times that way. I, I don't think I can get it wrong. At least mm -hmm. I hope not. Um, but uh, that's certainly something the Lord gives us aptitude. Mm -hmm. He gives us interest in the music. Um, he, he can provide the tools. Um, I've, I had prayed for a, a piano in my home uh, before I got one, uh, and it was 11th grade uh, before I actually got a piano at home, uh, and the Lord answered that prayer, so that certainly helped my development quite a bit, uh, but the Lord can provide things for us, the tools, the interest, the aptitude, uh, but what we do with that determines how the Lord can use it, and uh, uh, so Practice is certainly important. Um, we have to remember that our church music is, it's not just a job that we have as a church pianist, but it is a ministry. Um, so we have to approach it from that direction. We want to approach it like a job and a vocation in that we work to prepare for it. And we, uh, we perform our duties with uh, the right amount of vigor as if it is our job as if we're getting paid for it and all that, but we want to remember that it's a ministry. We're, we're communicating a message to people, and whether it's the accompanist that's supporting a soloist or a choir or congregational singing, or, or whether it's playing something as a solo that's for an offertory, for instance, um, we need to be communicating the messages of the songs. Um, there was a time recently when I played an offertory that it was for a prayer service, so I could do a little calmer offertory than I might normally do. The song was More Love to Thee, O Christ. And it, I found a pretty arrangement of it, uh, played that. And uh, after the service, somebody said to me, that was certainly a, a beautiful offertory. What song was that? And uh, so I, I try to be careful when I'm presenting purely instrumental music um, that what I'm playing are familiar songs that will hopefully make people think about the words of the song. Um, so there are a few times when I've uh, asked 
our pastor and song leader, um, could we maybe sing this song? I have a good arrangement of it, uh, but the people really need to be, be familiar with it before I feel like I can present it as, a, as an instrumental piece. That's so very true. You know, I've been in a few churches where they would actually put the words up as the pianist played How Great Thou Art or More Love to Christ, which is a beautiful hymn. Right. But it's somewhat uncommon today. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, other, another thing I was thinking too about when you're accompanying people, um, my job as an accompanist for, say, a soloist is to keep them comfortable, to to make them feel secure in when they're supposed to come in so they don't have to think about it. They don't have to wonder, uh, am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? Um, what, one of the uh, great opportunities I had when I was first learning, uh, I accompanied this family uh, for church services. They would, they would sing pretty often and they had very little concept of what a meter was. Uh, so every time they sang a song, it might be a little different. Than, than it was the last time. So I think that was good practice for me in following. <laughs> you, yes. learn to, you learn to catch up, uh, catch on subtle clues like a movement that, that they might make, when they might breathe. Um, so it, it, that, that can be quite interesting. I've, I've become interesting. a soloist that way. I walked into a meeting, I had not slept in a day and they called on me spontaneously to play for a man mm. that uh, I knew the song but we never sang any verse alike. Every time I thought I knew what he was going to do, he did something else. And I did not do as well as you would have done, Brother Dave. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Yes. So you're telling me that practice makes permanent. That's true. Mm -hmm. Not perfect, but permanent. Because I've done things so many times now that my hands just do it without thinking. Yep. Um, uh, but what about technique and theory? Mm. How important are those two things? Oh, I, I think they're quite important. Um, I, I find it handy to add scales to what I play pretty frequently. And that's kind of rare among church pianists that, that I normally listen to. Um, um, but there are uh, finger exercises that I do every time I practice just about like and those kind of things and when I do those finger exercises it's it, it is exercising the muscles in the fingers which which is good the muscles in the fingers and in the arms but it's also getting my brain tuned to each note is important to play those notes cleanly is important um, if if you're playing things without clean technique, then it, it's more mushy than it should be and not as distinct. And we wanna make a skillful, certain sound. Um, so uh, back to the scales, uh, it's nice to be able to just be in, in the middle of a song and think, well, a scale would be nice here. Oh, maybe I should go practice that. And the next time I play this, I can put a scale in there. So it's nice to just have those tools at your disposal. And again, like I talked about earlier, if you don't have to think about them, if they're just already there, then you can just throw them in like. Uh... So it can just just flow out when you can find the appropriate places to put the right scales. And if you uh, um, the more of them that you use, the more you'll get comfortable with uh, where to put them and which scale to put in that particular place. Uh, Brother Fox, if you'll pardon me, I have some practice that I have to go do right about now. Um, and so you, you can handle the rest of this, so this interview. Uh, yeah, actually, why don't we stop right now and have you talk about that um, modulation chart and let's have David do it. What's this modulation chart? Well, speaking of tools, and, and a, a piano player a long time ago, I, I grew up in a military home, and so we had a different piano play, teacher every year and a half or two or so, and a teacher that really helped me in how they described this concept of, of, of these things. They described my skill level as a toolbox, and my the, the desire is to build a toolbox and add more and more things. I think what you have 
is a tool that every piano player on the call right now should consider adding to their toolbox. They can get it on uh, BibleTruthMusic.com. I'll drop the link in the chat here in just a moment. But Brother Chamberlain, give us uh, the layman's view of, of what you have there with the modulation chart and, and demonstrate that for us if you would. Why, well, sure. Um, basically, this chart uh, has a page of the key of C. So it, it shows you how to get from the key of C to any other key within two measures, which that's an, a normally a, a good time frame to do a key change in if you're not trying to do something extended. Um, uh, so for instance, if you're doing the song, It Is Well With My Soul, and you want to go from C up to D flat, uh, this has the way to do that. And I'll just play exactly what's in, in the uh, modulation chart here, going from C to D flat. So that takes you right into the next key. So you're finishing the end of the chorus. And then the modulation chart comes right here. So that leads right into the next key. If on the other hand, you want to change from C to G, there's a way to do that here. So again, the end of the chorus. takes you right into G. And so there's a page for every key that's there. The next key is from D flat to get to any other key. So it's a handy tool. Um, and once you get comfortable with these, uh, you can add a little more variety to the key changes or, uh, and these are just a lot of great suggestions here and uh, a surefire yeah, yeah. way to get from one place to another. I, I imagine this would also be helpful for a piano player maybe playing a prelude or something like that before service, transitioning between songs, and maybe they have a book dedicated to prelude songs, or maybe they're just flipping through a hymnal to be able to go from a key that to, to a, a, a beginner piano player may think these keys will, will they'll never work together. But with that modulation chart, it will give you from point A to point B or point Z, whichever way you're looking for. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. And two, because there's a page for every original key going to every other key. Um, you know, if, if you start a song in C and you end up in D flat uh, and you want to go, instead of another half step up, you want to go a whole step up, that, that's in here in the chart. So you Excellent. can get from anywhere to anywhere. Excellent. And for those listening, I'll, I'll drop that link in the chat while, while you talk with the Fox. Okay. okay. Well, I, I want a copy of that chart myself. I really do. Actually, I studied that a long time ago, and we found that to be a very helpful tool for us to um, to present. Well, David, uh, have you made any CDs, any piano CDs? Uh, yes, I've made a few here, um, all here at Faith Music Missions. Uh, just a, a note, too, at Faith Music, we did start in 1979, uh, back before my time with Faith Music, and uh, we're at about 980 recordings so far, and we, we record... Uh, a lot of soloists, a lot of small groups like trios and, and duets, quartets. Uh, we've recorded choirs. Uh, we've recorded a, a lot of the, <clears throat> the uh, demo recordings for Bible Truth Music here. And uh, we get to do that great music and uh, kind of uh, <clears throat> get a preview of if our church choir wants to use some of those things. Uh, but here are some of the CDs that I've uh, recorded here at Faith Music missions and we have a website faithmusicmissions.org and uh, uh, our basically our whole catalog is available there and uh, you know I've done this uh, recording fear thou not several years ago that's one I'm singing on uh, and one I'm really singing on because I'm singing all five parts on it but uh, we have the great tools to do that uh, years ago I made a, a piano solo recording entitled how great thou art has some uh, a lot of like offertories on there that I enjoyed playing for a lot of years. And then my most recent one is Praises from the Piano. And uh, again, it's kind of a mixture of offertory type things, some more meditative songs. So it's uh, just a mix of piano music. Well, let's talk about offertories uh, for a moment. Let me ask you a question. 
And then I want you to just talk about offertories. You know, right this moment in our country, we're not passing the plate at most churches. They are at a few places. Uh, but many churches still want the offertory played, that people can prepare their offering during it and just drop it in on the way out. But if we were passing plates, here's my question. We were passing the plate at Faith Way Baptist Church. Ready? How long of an offertory does Pastor Stephen Russ want? Let me ask. Does he want a 20-minute offertory? Well, uh, he feels like he has to pay more for that. Uh, so, no. <laughs> <laughs> What's the length? Um, normally, we, we try to time them to where once the ushers finish and then maybe 15 or 20 seconds after they've gotten to the back and they're kind of doing their thing there to combine everything. Um, so that's usually about what we shoot for. It's about three minutes, depending mm -hmm. on if the ushers are kind of sleepy that day or, <laughs> or if they're ex extra energetic. So two and a half to three to three fifteen, yeah. somewhere in that neighborhood yeah. is, uh, and, and you want to do familiar music. You mentioned that. Right. Uh, what else about offertories and preludes would you want to tell us? Well, um, there are certain times for more meditative songs to be used, uh, slower songs to be used. Uh, if you have a special service, like if we do a, uh, every year we do a candlelight Christmas service. And my prelude for that service is generally, uh, of course, a mix of Christmas carols, but I don't hesitate to use some slower things like Silent Night, um, O Holy Night for, for something like that. But generally, um, people are uh, gathering in the uh, auditorium, uh, talking, uh, so we're kind of providing atmosphere, an atmosphere of Christian music, so we still want to use Christian songs in the preludes and postludes, um, but generally they should be more upbeat. And also in uh, preludes particularly, um, I try to use songs with varying tempos, varying meters. So I might play a 6-8 song and then a 4-4 four, four song and then a 3-4 song. Um, and even if two songs back to back have a similar meter, I try to break up the feel of that so it's not all the same thing and also uh, lively is one thing uh, hectic is another uh, <laughs> we, we don't want the congregation to uh to uh end up getting fatigued from what they're listening okay. to i want you to demonstrate hectic can you do can okay. you think just a moment get yourself prepared play something hectic something beyond what you would want it to be what what would you Demonstrate it for us. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, I got the picture in about three seconds. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's hectic. Yeah. That's beyond. Uh, comfortable. Yeah, uh, the, you know, spirited is one thing. Yeah, the people yeah. listening to that would think, oh, I'm glad that's over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That raises the blood pressure. Yes. All right. Conversely, mm -hmm. conversely, can you just do it just too slow and too dreary and just uh, no life, no energy? Demonstrate the other direction. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and somehow even that's a little more acceptable to me than the other one. <laughs> <laughs> that other one. And I like fast and quick and all that. But uh, so, um, Brother Micah, before you ask him a question, um, mm -hmm. uh, why don't you play? We're 29 minutes into this. Play us about a 90 second prelude. Let's listen to you play what you would like to. Not, not prelude. No, no, not prelude. Offertory, I meant to say. A 90 second off a tour. Okay.
faith is the victory. There's no music in the world like Christian music. Oh, that's for sure. Fantastic. It's faith, brother. Everybody's put their faith in Jesus Christ and live by faith. Brother Michael, what would you like to ask this man? Well, a question related to what we talked about a moment ago about the seriousness of really the job and vocation that God has given many of the people on the line that are watching right now. Um, when is the right time for the piano player to get to the piano? If the service starts Sunday evening at six o'clock, I would say it was 5.59 or so the time to sit down and open up the book and start playing, start playing the prelude or when, when is that time frame? Uh, of course, it's always up to the pastor as to what he wants. Uh, before the preludes that I play here at Faithway, uh, we have some recorded music that plays starting mm -hmm. at about 30 minutes before the service starts. And then um, I kind of see the piano prelude as uh, a message. Okay, get ready. We're going to start soon. Uh, and I usually start that about 10 minutes before the service. Uh, our pre piano prelude might be a little long for some. A lot of pastors would rather have about five minutes. Uh, but uh, in that 10 minute being a longer time, I try to use plenty of variety during that time so it doesn't sound like it's all the all the same song or all the same feel for those 10 minutes. Absolutely. Now, as far as the onus that is put on the piano player, as far as practice and things like that, talk to us about for, for a piano player. I, I know this can become, I wouldn't say a burden, but something that piano players will have to rise up to sometimes with, with, with practice outside of a normal church service time frame. Uh, making ourselves available to special music and making yourself available to the pastor's vision as far as what piano, what what the music of the church can be. Hughes talks about the servant's heart that is is kind of a prerequisite for being a part of, of church music. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I, I tend to be pretty flexible. Um, fortunately, I'm the person who uh, uh, unlocks the doors at the church and who locks the doors <laughs> after the service. So I'm, I'm usually there when all the other people are there and uh, uh, you just do have to be flexible because you, you, you're working with people that are presenting special music with all kinds of schedules. Um, so uh, usually what has worked really well for, for me uh, is to practice with people after service, you know, just don't be in any hurry um, uh, and don't make the people that you're rehearsing with feel that they're an inconvenience that boy, I have to, you know, I've got five minutes, so let's do it in that time, uh, because you have to give them time to get used to the accompaniment that you're doing for you, for the accompanist to get used to how the soloist wants to sing the song. Uh, and there may be special endings or tags or interludes that you have to discuss. And you, it's hard to do that well to present something that, that will be pleasing to the Lord with very, very limited practice time. Absolutely. I, I greatly appreciate you, you talking about that because I, I think at times, and I, I say this from the standpoint of being the accompanist here and there, but a lot of times you feel like I, I have so many other things going on, both in life and ministry. But when you're talking about communicating the gospel through song, this is a, it's a heavy responsibility and something that should be taken seriously. And as you said, sometimes we just need to give ample time to it. Right. And also, uh, and my, uh, daughter, Maria Kamiski, who has sung on a lot of the Bible Truth uh, music demos with us. Um, she is at Franklin Road Baptist, where I moved from when I came here 20 years ago. And uh, she mentions how uh, some of the things I did while I was there, she didn't think was a big deal. Uh, like uh, she said, you know, when I'd accompany her, she'd say, well, you know, like to do this, uh, can we do it a step higher? And, you know, she thought it was no big deal because we just then did it a step higher. And uh, she <clears throat> thought, well, when I was the pianist there, you always knew who she was going to be practicing with. And she always knew I was there after services. And uh, so that, that made it easy. Um, so I try to make sure people know that, you know, I'm available. And, uh, and sometimes as the pianist, uh, I jump out of what, some people would think is the church pianist role. And I asked the people who are singing, when would you like to go over this song? Um, so, you know, it, it's all 
we're all on the same team here uh, trying to do something to uh, enhance the services, to prepare the people's hearts for the messages that are coming up. So it, it, it's all right for us to go a little extra mile. And then two, if you go over a song with somebody or a choir song that's coming up that is challenging for the accompanist, um, you know, any practice that we can do outside of practicing with other people, it's uh, always less embarrassing to make your mistakes by yourself when you're practicing rather than making mistakes while other people are hearing it. Amen. Um, well, let me ask this question about invitation music. Yes. Um, three years ago, Brother David, you and I were doing a meeting together in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Johnny Pope preached that night. He preached his sermon was Sweet Hour of Prayer. And so naturally for the invitation, we wanted to use that song. Mm -hmm. And as you just noted, they were going to call on me to sing it solo. So I said, David, move it down two steps or right. whatever it was mm -hmm. to fit my voice. And you did it. And that was a life-changing night for me. You know, you and I have talked since then yeah. because that really changed my life. That sermon, God used it. But overall, an invitation, what are uh, two or three things that pianists need to think of during the invitation? Uh, yeah, certainly it's not the time to uh, show off and do everything fancy that you thought of to do. Um, you're... In invitation, the pianist is uh, providing background for people to make make life changing decisions. Um, so if if the song is that you're using is familiar, uh, or or if it's not, you know, play the melody. Don't be very busy about it, because people don't need to be distracted by the music. They need to be put at ease by it. So a lot of times, invitation songs are more meditative, uh, like pass me not, O gentle savior, uh, Lord, I'm coming home, uh, have thine own way, Lord. Um, so we need to play those at invitation time with that kind of spirit. Also, we have to be very attentive to the pastor because he'll usually give a signal when he wants the pianist to start, especially if it's a, a pastor that the pianist has not worked with before. Uh, so you just have to be very attentive during that time. Uh, and catch any clues that the preacher might give to you. Um, I'm going to ask you to spontaneously play a little bit of sweet uh, hour of prayer as you would do it at an invitation. Would you play just a little bit of sweet hour of prayer, 60 seconds or so? Okay. Thank you. bit of rise and fall to it yes but it stayed uh, uh quite within the accepted range that it would not distract from the service right but um hopefully be used of god to provoke people to prayer and commitments to prayer yeah certainly. what else is on your list we we need to wrap it up in the next five minutes or so but i know there's things you wanted to talk about tonight sure uh, i've covered a lot of them uh one thing that that I do, Brother Micah kind of uh, alluded to it earlier, some uh, pianists have a, a book of preludes and postludes that they play and they flip through that as they go. Um, I actually have a list of about 80 songs uh, that I work from for preludes and postludes. They're, they're songs that are familiar to me that I like hearing, I like playing. Uh, so hopefully that makes, makes them communicate well. But I basically have them arranged in keys where I have all my F songs together. And then after that, B flat songs. Sometimes I'll play through the list completely, uh, you know, as long as uh, the time lasts. Sometimes I'll play a song from F and then I'll go to B flat and then I'll go to E flat and play one song in those. Um, sometimes in the preludes and postludes, I'll be more thematic, where if I play Redeemed How I Love to Proclaim It, I might also play therefore the redeemed of the lord shall return 
um, and then redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Um, so I might play those songs together. Uh, but the the list that I work from, and again, it has about 80 songs and it fits on a one page. It's not very large type, but all I have to see is the title of the song anyway. Um, but <clears throat> And any pianist can do that if they're comfortable with enough songs. Uh, you may start with a list of 20 songs that you're, you'll feel comfortable playing with and just make a list of those. That way, when you're doing a, a prelude, especially if it's a 10 minute long prelude, like I get to do many times, uh, if you draw a blank, you can just look at the list and say, okay, I can do that song next. Uh, I have had times before I did this that I got stuck on Jesus loved me loves me and so I played that as a prelude song and then I got stuck on it where that melody was in my head I couldn't think of anything else to play uh, so this this list helps with that for sure yes it's nice to have the list though you can play them all by memory it's nice to remember what's on the list <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. And, um, and, yeah and also uh, uh, as far as accompanying another thing I wanted to mention uh accompanying needs to be stable um, and we have to keep the tempo in mind we have to keep the feel in mind um, and like if you're accompanying a choir even though they're watching a director sure they are um, uh, the the accompaniment needs to be real stable so everybody can tell where they are also with congregational accompaniment it's the same way yeah the the pianist and the conductor must be in sync together. Um, that's really good. So here's a couple um, just out in left field questions. Okay. Um, number one, do you have a favorite key to play in? And number two, do you have a favorite hymn that you appreciate? No, favorite key, favorite hymn. Mm. Um, boy, there are, are so Maybe many. you don't. Maybe you just like it all. <laughs> well, uh, depending on the, some songs feel better in certain keys and some feel better in others. F is certainly an, an easy one that I'm really, really familiar with. Of course, most every pianist would be if they've played for more than uh, six months. Um, strangely enough, I enjoy playing in F sharp. Uh, which... That is strange. <laughs> yes. What about well, the key of G flat? Yes, I've, you know, many times you have somebody that's singing a song in F and they say, oh, I'd like to do a key change for that last verse. Uh, so I ended up getting a lot of experience in F sharp. Uh, but, but that's fun. I enjoy D flat for a lot, of, a lot of songs. One thing about D flat is that you have that tool that you can use. That sounds that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you can't do that in every key. Yeah, yeah. that particular and, and, as far as a favorite hymn, I kind of wobble around to where for a while one seems very favorite to me and then uh, I, I like others. Um, uh, I guess the one most recently that has kind of resonated in, in my mind and my heart is Spirit of the Living God, Fall Fresh on Me. Oh, yes. It's really just a kind of an elongated chorus, but it's a great song. Well, we're going to have you play a little bit of that in just a moment, right. because, um, you know, sometimes we don't know what our church needs the most. We might right. think it's a new parking lot, a new staple, a better air conditioner, better heater. What we really need is the Holy Spirit. Sure. The uh, power of God upon the preacher, the spirit of God moving in the service, spirit of the living God. I think that's wonderful. Why don't you play a little bit of that and then Brother Micah make some closing comments and all that. Brother David, it's been a joy to have you, sir. Oh, same here.
Brother Micah. That, that was wonderful, name. sir. Thank you so much for taking up the time. I will mention, uh, I did receive a couple of questions that came in. We did not have the time to get to via email and some things, and maybe we'll give some contact information if people have a question or two they'd like to direct to your way. Uh, yeah. But I so greatly appreciate you taking in and just helping us. This is an area that we can all tune up just a little bit, iron sharpening iron. And it's nice uh, well, when someone as accomplished as you are, but still with a servant's heart, still desiring to help others get to the level that you've taken a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of work to get to, um, but all for the glory of God. So I just want to thank you. Any last words, Brother Chamberlain, before I close in a word of prayer in a moment? Well, I'm, I'm just uh, privileged to get to be a part of this. And, uh, um, you know, some hopefully some... Thing I said will uh, resonate with somebody. I'm uh, just glad to help, and uh, it's all for the cause of Christ, anyhow. Amen. Amen. And if you mentioned for the folks, and I did drop the link for the yep. uh, chord modulation chart. Uh, where where can people grab some of your CDs if they would like some good? I mean, for me, you you playing for those, those last forty five seconds. I was thinking I need some more of that around the house. Where okay. can people grab those? Oh yes, I have CDs available at faithmusicmissions.org. Uh, and uh, our website there has our whole catalog and you can once you're onto that website you can search for david chamberlain and uh, those things will come up excellent well thank you sir brother fox any last words before we close in a word of prayer well i want folks to get that modulation chart and get those cds christian homes need christian music in them so mom dad get these cds for your house Thank you, Brother Mike. And you close in prayer and comments. Amen. And for those that did ask, that we will send the recorded version of this out via email within about 24 hours of the end of this broadcast, as well as a link for that chord modulation chart. And uh, share, the, share the recorded version with some other piano friends that you have, and that'll be great. Let's close with a, with a word of prayer if we can. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of music. We thank you for the opportunity that you give us to be a participant in worship to you. God, we ask that we would take this heavy responsibility, you know, this great responsibility to heart, and that we would do everything in our power to do it as Brother Chamberlain mentioned skillfully. God, we thank you for everything you've done over these past 40 minutes. I pray that something, some nugget, will be taken back to their church uh, by these uh, church panel players and will be a blessing to them. Thank you for what's, what's happened, Lord. We thank you even more for what's going to happen. All to the glory of your son. Your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good night, everybody.